Hello and welcome. My name is Dr. Patricia Kalanicki and I am doing these videos for St. Joseph's College. This first video is on modifications and accommodations. For EdTPA, you're going to need to know specifically uh, what kinds of modifications and accommodations to be used for your context for learning. Starting with students with disabilities, for your context for learning, you will have a list of types of learners with special needs. Additionally, your lessons and multiple areas of your commentaries will require you to reference how you're supporting these learners, what accommodations and modifications you are making, and why these are helpful for your students. Uh, these learners with special needs may include students with disabilities. Before I continue on, I do want to clarify the difference between an accommodation and a modification. An accommodation changes how a student may learn material. And a modification changes what either the student is taught or what they're expected to learn or what they're expected to produce. So consider those as we move forward and I'll give you some examples on the next slide. So students with disabilities, you should be able to either identify or ask from your CT what is their classification or, or maybe more, a little more generally, what are their areas of need? Is this student really struggling with reading? Is this student really struggling with math learning, with content learning, with math calculations? Um, these are things that your CT should be able to tell you on a more general basis about the students with disabilities in your classroom for your context for learning, for your learning segment. Um, any math or language related goal, you could ask to see their IEP or have the CT kind of list these out for you. They may be helpful for you uh, to be able to identify what kinds of accommodations or modifications you might want to suggest on your context for learning. Some examples, again, learning disability is the most prevalent um, disability on an IEP. About 35% of U.S. students have, um, if they're classified with an IEP, they have a learning disability. Um, so again, the difference between accommodations and modifications. So accommodations, a student like this may have issues with executive functioning. That's kind of, that's a list of skills that students really um, benefit from when learning. That could be include prioritizing assignments, uh, time management. So something like this may be helpful for a student with a learning disability. You may have a timer for your do now or for a specific task. So that helps and assists that a student with, dis with that learning disability to be sure that they complete on time. Uh, you may even have extra, uh, extra rev reviews or reminds for due dates that are coming up. Modifications. A student like this, if let's say you're doing a fill in the blank or some kind of vocabulary based question, this particular student may be given a word bank while others may not. So consider something like that. Um, OHI, another very pre prevalent learning disability, um, is, is also known as other health impairment. Typically students with ADHD are classified under this classification. Um, an accommodation may be prompting during the lesson, preferential seating so the student is up front or near the source of instruction. The teacher may be uh, going over to that person uh, during independent work or during group work to be sure that they know what's going on, they've heard the directions, they can repeat the directions. Um, modifications may be abbreviated tasks or shorter homework assignments, again depending on the, spe the spe specific learning disability that that student may have um, or other health impairment that student may have. And finally, another very common one that I interact with uh, often is autism. So student may need sentence starters for help with group interactions. Um, they may need a modification with digital manipulatives only because they have sensitivity issues, um, tact, you know, tactile, touching other things may make them uncomfortable. Digital manipulatives may be beneficial for, again, a student that I worked with, but maybe not your particular student. So again, consider your particular student and what they may need. Um, again, for your context for learning, you're going to need um, a student, an example from each different category. Again, not saying that you may have those students in your class, but again, we're showing EdTPA that you are able to understand and modify and adapt learning for those uh, various students with their various learning needs. Your ELLs. So some information you may want to ask your CT is what's their identified level of performance. Again, that's based on the uh, NICELATS test, which is a test that's given to students that are learning English um, to evaluate their level of understanding. What is their level of language in their home or native language? So are they able to write and read in their native language as well? Do they speak fluently in their native language? Um, 
Consider supports particularly for language, obviously with our ELLs. Glossaries or definitions provided in the student's native language as well as English simultaneously so they can see the words that you're using and the word and the definition in their native language. Again, if they have, um, if they're able to read and write in their native language, that would be helpful for them. Um, use of those documents on exams. Again, it is not the book Fair Isn't Always Equal, right? by Rick Wormelli um, basically states that you know if a student requires an accommodation like that they don't really need you don't need a document to say that you as an educator should be able to make those kinds of judgment calls so if you feel a student needs that kind of support on a test because they're struggling with language that much then give them the accommodation and see if it helps them sentence starters for open-ended response questions could be on test it could be in class if you have an, a question that says explain your answer and you just leave it blank maybe for your ELLs maybe even for your students with learning disabilities you're gonna have sentence starters um, the first step I took was the reason I did this was because um, even discussion sentence starters for class discussions I agree with blank because I disagree with another example is um, and so on and so forth and finally partnering students with the same native language may help sometimes um, they will they hopefully have enough learning or understanding where they can help each other again using their native language it's always a good idea to promote their use of native language if they feel comfortable using it and then finally the category other special learning needs again this is really based on your experiences either in observations or assessments um, in your classroom so far are there any student concerns this could be regards to learning this could be regards to behavior that may need additional consideration right so think about students that may have limited prior knowledge this could be a new student this could be a student that scored low in math the previous year this could be a student also known as an s life which is a student with limited formal education yes they do happen they do exist and we have to be prepared for them um, so think about a student that maybe you know is an accelerated class but is struggling a little bit or is in a typical class but is struggling a little bit um, how can we help those particular students that may have um, a limited background knowledge of math maybe they didn't master all of the skills that they should have mastered in the previous year think about students also that just struggle in general with like literacy skills maybe their reading is not as strong and they're not technically formally classified but they do struggle in reading maybe they struggle with word problems think about how are you going to help those types of students both in class and maybe even on assessments and then finally you also have to consider your students who are fast finishers or gifted students those students need supports as well I'm not talking about more work I'm talking about different work so consider having a formative assessment in the middle of a lesson maybe you modeled some examples maybe students worked by themselves and you talked about it and now they're kind of ready to move on independently you want to give them a quick question kind of assess where they're at and you can ask them even if you feel comfortable with this and we went over the answer and you're confident and you're good why don't you do the even numbers and those are going to be the more challenging questions if you're saying to your students you know you didn't feel really comfortable you still need a little bit more practice maybe you're going to do the odd numbers right and those are going to be the slightly easier questions again being able to have worksheets and have resources that are differentiated in this way will allow you the flexibility to maybe move students around maybe you want to have a student start with the easier ones and as soon as you walk around and you see they're they're doing all right hey why don't you try some of the challenging ones again not asking students to do more work asking students to do work based on where they're at and their level at that time so again I hope this helped. Again, a brief overview of modifications and accommodations, specifically for your context for learning, but also throughout your uh, assessment commentary and all of your other commentaries for your ed TPA. I hope this helped. Thanks so much, guys.